Hi, it's Dr Smith ringing from Station Road Surgery. Is that Nicola? It is, yes. Hi, Dr Smith. Hi there. Just to make sure I've got the right medical records up in front of me, just give me your date of birth and your address, please. Yes, uh, it's 17th of January, 1970, and my address is 29 Brigroyd. How can I help you today? Um, it's a bit embarrassing, really. I, mm -hmm. I had a bit of an accident at work. Right. an embarrassing accident at work. Um, yeah, and uh, I just I just wonder what what might be going on with me really. Okay, yeah. uh, you said an embarrassing accident. I mean, in terms of um, yeah, as a GP, I often see patients who you know struggle to talk about things that might be painful to discuss or just frankly embarrassing uh, and certainly working together uh, normally uh, what we can do is make a real difference so uh, uh, just tell me what's been happening I I wet myself uh, basically mm -hmm. at work and I, I, I mean I, I do wear pads uh, mm -hmm. because I, I do tend to have the um, need of them um, but I never had a uh, an incident where, even though I'm wearing a pad, I it was as if I wasn't, <laughs> basically, and I, it, it was mortifying. I, I'd stay in the chair. I had to go out from work early um, to change. Mm. Yeah, it was um, <laughs> it was shocking, really. That sounds really traumatic. Yeah, it, it was. I really don't want it to happen again. Oh, I, I can appreciate that. So just just tell me a little bit more about the problems you've been facing. Um, so I've, I've worn, you know, pads, mm. ten a lady, that kind of thing for years, really. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I, I, I if I, if I sneeze or I, I, I cough or I, I often when I laugh, mm. um, I have need of them. But uh, I, I, this, this, you know, this has never happened, and I, I, I where I've had a full blown mm. accident, and I thought, what. And I have I had a friend, who, mm -hmm. you know. I'm wondering if I've got what she had. She, she prolapsed basically. Right. And I thought, is this what is happening to me? Is that what's going on? And I mm -hmm. need to I need to perhaps do something about that if it is. But, and certainly that's a very sensible thought. But uh, just to, to, to get a handle on things, if you like, uh, you you mentioned that you had this uh, this terrible incident at uh, work. I mean, how often are you having uh, problems? You know, where where the pad the pads overwhelmed and you, uh, and oh, you have a leak. You, this has never happened before. Mm. This 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 one time, you know, uh, is is it really? Um, yeah. And so, by the sound of it, you're controlling it, but it, you know, it's obviously affecting work. Is it affecting things like you know home or your hobbies? No, not really. No, I mean you know the, the um, and like I say, normally it's not a problem because I wear the pads, and hmm. if there is you know it's it's taken care of. If there is a little leak, it's taken care of. Hmm. But this, this is completely different. This was a full blown, I wet myself. And if yes. that happens, you know, I mean, it won't be so much of a problem at home, but if that happens and I'm at the supermarket yes. or I'm, I'm stuck in traffic or, you know, I'm at work again, I just, oh, yeah. I really, you know. I can, I can really appreciate why you'd be worried. Yeah, obviously yeah. that would be, yeah, that'd be traumatic. Now you did mention your friend. Yes. Uh, I mean, had you any thoughts as to how I might help you today? Well, I don't know. I mean, I know my friend ended up having to have an operation, mm. and I don't know. Is is that perhaps what I'm looking at with this? I don't know. Okay. Well, certainly, uh, you know, we'll have a we'll try and work out exactly what's going on, and then we can have a, a real chat about sure. what the different uh, type of treatment options are, because there are a lot of things that we can do. Not not every woman needs an operation. Okay. So just to get an insight into what might be causing it, I mean, one of the commonest causes is, is childbirth. And, uh, and you know, women are having uh, children, particularly they have, uh, the more children they have, it becomes more of a problem. Uh, if uh, it was a, a, a difficult childbirth and, and that can weaken the muscles that support the bladder uh, and be a cause. And on top of that, it tends to get more common as you get older because naturally muscles do weaken as we get older. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean that that would make sense to be honest because uh, my my el uh, my youngest was the, uh, quite a big baby. Mm. You know. Um, yeah. He, he, uh, 
I did start wearing pads not long after, mm. and then he was my third. Mm. So, and, and I am 52. Mm. So <laughs> there is a few of those factors you've just mentioned that are true for me, um, which, which would explain, you know, I mean, why I need the pads at all anyway. But, but um, yeah, yeah. And, and there are some things that, that we do that can make a difference in terms of, uh, you know, if you're uh, drinking alcohol. Uh, if you drink coffee that can irritate the bladder, that can make stress incontinence worse. Yeah, yeah well, I do tend to drink a lot of coffee at work. Um, yeah, and I'm not so much alcohol, but coffee, mm-hmm. definitely. Okay, and that's something that we can, we can talk about when it comes to try, trying to improve things. Okay. Um, sometimes if you've put on weight, particularly around your tummy, just that weight of your tummy pressing on the bladder can, can make things worse. Is that something you... Yeah, I mean, my job's sedentary. Mm. And, uh, I could probably do with losing a few pounds to be fair um uh yeah that that's probably another factor <laughs> okay now just to make sure that i'm not missing underlying medical problems um have you noticed any blood in your way at all no and i see from your records that you, you you've uh, been through the menopause so have you noticed any abnormal type of bleeding from the vagina or bleeding after sex at all no i haven't no okay, that's good news uh, sometimes diabetes can cause urine problems and people with diabetes often have a family history, thirsty, tired, blurred vision. Is any of that you, do you think? No, no, none of that, nothing like that. Um, other causes can be related to the nerves that control the bladder. And so, you know, if you, if you notice you know, new onset back pain or pain shooting down the leg or, or numb patches or muscle weakness in the legs, no, no, I haven't got anything like that, no. Okay, that, that, that's actually uh, very positive yeah. uh, uh, and, and good news. Mm-hmm. So where do we go with this? Well, we, we need to actually answer a few more questions first. Uh, and, and to do that, uh, I'd like to actually arrange for you to come up and have an appointment in surgery okay. to be examined. Right. Uh, and what this would involve is feeling your tummy to see, okay. is your bladder enlarged? Or might there be something like a big cyst or a, or a fibroid that's pressing on the bladder? Okay. Yeah, okay. Also, we need to arrange a vaginal examination uh, to look for a prolapse, you know, that as, as, as your friend had. Okay. And I realise that it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, you know, obviously, people can feel embarrassed and, and certainly if we can have a nurse with us uh, to make you feel more comfortable while we do that. I've had plenty of smear tests, so it's nothing new <laughs> and one thing that would be really helpful is when you come to that appointment to bring a sample of wee because we like to dip test that looking for infection looking for blood looking for the sugar of diabetes sure okay so going forward what could make a real difference well perhaps I ought to explain it first uh, in terms of you know why we got it well we, we think about the bladder it's like a, 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 a it's like a balloon isn't it full of, full of wee um, and underneath the bladder you have what's called the pelvic floor mm-hmm. and this is basically a sheet of muscle that supports the bladder mm-hmm. uh, and the, the wee pipe goes through that muscle floor and that muscle floor when it's nice and taut nips up the wee pipe and helps maintain your continence right okay having kids stretches up uh, those muscles and as we age as I mentioned it can weaken those muscles and that's why when you cough and sneeze that increased pressure in your tummy just overwhelms that uh, those muscles uh, and that's when you have your accident I see yeah so what do we do about it well one of the things is actually working out how much fluid you're taking in because in some cases, women so fearful, understandably, of, uh, of wetting themselves actually drink too little. Mm. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, you often have women who are drinking the normal amount for them, but the normal amount for them is actually a lot compared to everybody else. Mm, okay. So to get a handle on it, what I'll do is I'll text you what's called a bladder diary. Uh, and you just run for three days with it. Okay. And you actually have to document everything that you drink and what type of fluid, the volume you drink. You have to document if you have any leaks and, and then uh, you know, an accident uh, and, and how bad they were. Okay. But also you actually have to physically measure your volume of your urine every time you go and have a wee. 
so that we can get a real feel for input and output. Okay, right. So yeah, I realise it's a bit <laughs> difficult to organise, but it, the information leaflet and the Blood Diary does explain okay. how to do it. Sure. And it does make a difference to how we manage it. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's, that, that's going to be a really helpful assessment. We've talked about the coffee, and if you know, that's the one thing you could do right today that yes. could make a difference. Cut out all that coffee at work, and that may avoid that disaster that you experience. It certainly will do, yes. Yeah. Um, other things uh, that uh, we can think about is something called uh, pelvic floor exercises. Yes. Um, and what this does is actually develop the strength of that pelvic floor, those muscles, and help restore your, your continence. Right. And what I will do is text you really useful information on pelvic floor exercises right. uh, from the bladder and bowel website. And these exercises you have to do about three times a day, a number of repetitions, and normally you start to notice an improvement in continence after about a month. Right. But it's really important to say that you continue doing those exercises because it's like you know, developing the, a muscle in your arm. It takes time and you sure. need to maintain it to keep it strong. Yeah. And it's that that can make a real difference to the symptoms that you're experiencing. Okay, okay. Now, I mentioned that Blaulam Bladder site website that has got the diary, but also it's got some really useful tips on continence aid. So you know, there is more than just the tenor ladies right. uh, that you could use okay. while we're getting all of this organised and sorted out. So if I text you the link for the bladder diary, yeah. text you the link about the continence products, mm -hmm. and it's well worth having a good look at that website because it's really helpful. Yeah, it sounds useful. Yes, thank you. And if you could have a go at cutting out the coffee. Yeah, we'll definitely. And uh, definitely. I'll be seeing you with our practice nurse for that examination next week. Is that okay? Next week. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay.